Yeah, thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, this is uh, this is fun. Um, so I want to talk about uh, this thing that I'm doing with Michael Weems. We've been talking about Michael and I have been talking about this for years and years and years, but mostly as uh, uh, kind of a pleasurable excuse to go and visit the restaurants of Scotland, um, which we can't do anymore. So we're stuck. What we're talking about is birational maps from smooth, smooth, complex threefolds. And um, as the title said, we're really thinking about threefold flops. So I want to talk a little bit around flops first. I know that, you know, I see in the audience uh, uh, walls of experts, so you'll in you can make a cup of coffee or something for the first half hour. Um, so a flop is, um, you know, a birational map from between two smooth, in this case, threefolds, um, uh, which is an isomorphism away from some curves in either side, and above all, the canonical class is zero on those curves. And the case we're considering is um, sometimes called the simple case, where you're an isomorphism away from a single copy of P1 on the two halves. Um, uh, flops are, um, uh, well, anyway, we'll come to it. Uh, so there's a famous classification from a, a thousand years ago by Laufer, um, which is that the normal bundle of this uh, C1 can only take one of three forms. Um, if you haven't seen this before, you'll see that the numbers add up to minus two, because of course that's the that's the thing that's ringing up canonical class being zero. Um, and then, well, you better not go too positive, otherwise you'll pick up some H1. But in any case, um, it's sort of slightly shocking that you might have positive at all, right? I mean, you know, I suppose this is why Michael and I both started thinking about this uh, 10 or 20 years ago. Um, was it, We're just sort of basically appalled by the fact that you can have some positive normal bundle and you still contract. Um, anyway, that's that's how it is. Um, uh, I've put in this little just remark about you, you'll recognize here a blow down from X down to C2, the contraction of a minus one curve on a surface. And I've, I've done it, I suppose, partly um, uh, just to motivate the, the, calcul the concrete calculations. Um, it's also partly because in Warwick, we've had this uh, fun thing in lockdown where all members of staff have to give several talks a term on research to finally our undergraduates um, to make up for sort of the lack of a mathematical culture in the building that we used to have. And uh, so uh, I have been talking a lot about, you know, if this wasn't the complex numbers, this was the real numbers. You know, there's a lot of Merbius strips and uh, a student knitted me a Merbius strip. I wish I had it here, I've lost it. Knitted me a Merbius strip with a central thread down the middle that you could pull tight to witness the contraction of the central fiber. Uh, pretty marvelous. Um, if you know anything about knot theory, you'll understand uh, what happens to the disk in three space. But anyway, that's, uh, the, I suppose the main point I was really doing is here's a little piece of surface. It's glued together by two affine surfaces uh, in different coordinates, kind of bizarrely chosen. And there's a gluing map there, which tells you how you glue them. So let me move to flops. There's the, the famous example that um, many of you will know that a tier flop, the Atiyah Tsariski flop. Uh, it's very similar, it's glued by this formula, two copies of C3 glued together by that formula, um, which you, you know, why have I said this, that formula is the same as that one. So Atiyah flop is like two blowdowns transversely twisting round. Um, uh, one of the applied mathematicians in my department pointed out that this is a tornado and they weren't terribly surprised that it could flop, but anyway. Um, uh, how to see the flop, um, if you haven't seen it before, well, you can calculate all the global functions on X. It's, it's uh, generated by these four. Those four give you a map. Visibly, these four functions of the map satisfy this quadratic relation. That defines a Y. This quadratic relation, there's two ways to say this. One is it has an involution. This is how Collar proved flops um, a while ago. Uh, so I can do the involution and come back up. There's the flop. Or I can use the non-unique factorization going on here. I can recover X from Y 
well, I just have to tell you who D is in terms of X, Y, Z. There it is. This equality happens because this because of this equation, but this equation has non-unique factorization, so I can uh, pass it a different way to get a different D, and that gives me a different X. And you know, there it is. There's the flop. And this is the unique flop um, up to analytic uh, isomorphism in a tubular neighborhood of the um, of the D axis. It's a unique flop, unique flop with normal bundle minus one minus one. Fab. Um, so far, so good. So let me start writing. And uh, um, if you can't read my writing, I'll make it non-examinable. So um, the normal bundles, remember, were minus one, minus one, zero, minus two, and uh, one minus three. Uh, it's the one minus three is that I really want to get to. But let me talk about the zero minus twos for a moment. Um, many of you will know that uh, Miles Reed in 1983, I think is the paper, classified these naught, classified the simple naught minus two flops. And uh, as I said, it's enough to tell you what's going on uh, downstairs on Y when you take your Mobius strip, your three dimensional Mobius strip and pull the center tight. Um, so naught on Y uh, looks like this, this very beautiful normal form that Miles came up with. Um, uh, Z plus W to the N times Z minus W to the N. Um, and that's all taking, oops, that's all taking place in C4. So there's Y. Um, and you can see when N is one, that's just the same as the Atiyah. And th this, this picture does have this extra parameter N. Um, so it's an infinite family. Um, I prefer, no, I don't prefer at all, but I like a, a, a different way of writing it. So in a different language, I might write this as um, some large four dimensional cover of this flop given by um, X1, Y1 is equal to X2, Y2 minus twice Z to the N. That's four dimensional, so that's in C5. And C star is acting on that with weights in the x1, x2, z, y1, y2, with weights 1, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 1. And sure enough, if you calculate um, u divided by c star, so calculate the invariance of that c star action, you get um, y. And the variation of that c star action gives you the flop. Um, nice. Um, the, I suppose I'm not going to come back to that language, so I'm not sort of really explaining that, although you may know it. Uh, the reason I'm really saying it is to remind myself um, to go and see Tom's talk tomorrow afternoon, um, because uh, he's got this title which suggests that he's going to um, um, make mincemeat of my attempt to describe this flop nicely, and he's going to describe it more nicely. Anyway, there you have it. Um, good. So that's just that's the end of the matter as far as um, as far as minus one minus one and naught minus two simple flops go, and so I want to just think a little bit more about these one minus three flops. Cool. Um, so I suppose a new chapter. Um, one minus three flops and potentials. And so um, there's a whole bunch of people I want to who, who explain how to do this um, over many decades. So I want to write X as C3 glued together to C3 um, and with coordinates A, B, C on the one and D, E, F on the other, just as we did a tier just now. Um, uh, so um, it's hard to... Uh, list everybody, but let, let me list a few. Uh, Brian Katz Lung of uh, in 01, um, and uh, physicist Ferrari in 03, and uh, uh, Kurto, um, Kurto's thesis in 05, and uh, subsequent papers, uh, and Morrison and Aspinall, and many, many other people. Um, explain how to do this. 
and they give they give a model which is i have to tell you the glue so uh the model for the glue which is i better express d e and f in terms of a b and c and so let me do that it's uh, one over a b over a and a cubed c well hang on there's going to be more of course but that's nice because here you see the bundle uh, the normal bundle one minus three so that's uh, that's a pretty good start um plus and then um you know then plus sort of unknown delta um now this delta is very highly constrained um so you can write yourself you can write more or less anything there well you can write anything there and glue it compute functions and compute what that contraction is and that may be flopping or it may not be and uh um in a sense if you wanted to classify all one minus three flops all you'd have to do is tell me the list of normal forms of that delta that would do um that seems to be uh, uh jolly hard um there's a this trick that um well a kind of construction that uh recovers delta so and delta uh can be recovered from um a non-commutative potential a non-com potential um f oops f in uh, non-commutative variables so these are new x's and y's uh, nothing to do with previous x's and y's um or we may need to go locally uh, sort of uh, formal so we might need to sort of work in a very close to the origin so work with power series but that's fine um let me let me uh give a little example uh, we're trying to work with a potential so for example um if f was x y squared and i'm going to write this cyclically um respectively i don't need to but um just it feels like the right thing to do um right now and in any case it gives the answer that i've calculated so that's a good reason to do it it gives the glue uh one over a b over a a cubed c and uh, now i need to check plus b squared plus um a squared b cubed plus a squared b to the four and that is indeed a glue that works for to give a flop so this lot here is all delta um nice um bkl uh so brian Katzlan give a uh, um a very nice picture give a deformation of this in general um uh, which I like to think of in in sort of old-fashioned language as a Q-smoothing, but it's not quite it's not uh, quite as Q-smoothing. But I like well, you know, you can think of it the way you like to think of it. Um, it's a family like this, and sitting inside the big X is a family of X's, and they're mapping down to family of Y's. And when T is not zero, uh, that that X T down to Y T. Um, has split this simple curve into a whole bunch of a tier flopping contractions. So when T is not, this is a flopping contraction. By this, I mean the map from XT to YT from flopping contraction of uh, disjoint uh, minus one minus one curves. Um, well, they're copies of P1, so I mean, uh, with respect to some polarization, there, there are some number of lines, uh, some number of conics, uh, some number of uh, cubics, and so on, twisted cubics, and so on. Um, uh, these things here are called the uh, Gopakuma Waffer invariants. Gopakuma Waffer invariants calculating how many p1s your flop splits up into when you deform it into a tiers and it's uh, keeping track of degree as well this first one here n1 that was the n in reed's example in reed's 
pagoda, as I saw Tom's title refers to it. And the example that I have above is um, N1, N2 is equal to uh, 5, 1. Oddly enough, I've never actually built that uh, deformation, but uh, that's I, uh, either it's difficult. I mean, in the paper, it's not so difficult to explain why it's there, but uh, to do it by hand, uh, I didn't, didn't try. So let me let me talk about now the Jacobi algebra of um, a potential uh, of this potential. Sorry, Gavin, can I can I ask? Yes. So you didn't tell us how you got the delta from the f, or uh, is that should, should that, that's, that's supposed no, to be obvious? But, you're, no, that's very good, Bash. Thanks. Uh, I didn't tell you. Um, um, let me. So delta from f. Good. Thank you. Um, I was uh, trying to keep it secret because I can never quite get it right. Um, I mean, I could look it up, I suppose, right? Uh, delta from f, uh, from the potential f, is it, you take x and you substitute in some ATI. Sorry, let me, let me write it like this. It's a monomial transformation. x to the i, y to the j, where momentarily you ignore the fact that they don't commute. Uh, maps to a to the something, B to the something else, uh, where those are the numbers that make my formula work. And they're going to be something like I plus J plus w minus one, uh, I minus two, something like that. Um, but uh, I, uh, sorry, I didn't didn't actually look that up. But that that's all it is. It's just a substitution, a monomial substitution from something non-commutative to something commutative. Um, thanks. I can see that you're calculating in your head <laughs> and amending my formula to truth, so thank you. <laughs> so the Jacobian algebra is, uh, well, it's just what you think it is. You uh, take uh, the non-commuting polynomials and you divide them by the derivatives, um, derivative with respect to x of f and derivative with respect to y of f. And there's just this little little um, catch. Um, uh, actually, um, I think I, to be pedantic, I just wanted to call these a capital D because I use curly D later, but this, this is not a big deal. Um, where D of x is, this is strike off uh, left x's. Uh, that's to say, I'm going to walk through this potential here, and if I see an x on the left of a monomial, I'll knock it off, and if I see a y on the left of it, I'll call it zero. So let me just work out what that is without uh, defining it. Uh, the first term has x, y squared, so I'm going to um, knock off the x and call that y squared. The next term begins with a y, so I'm going to knock that off and call it zero, because there's no x there, and then there's another y, and then uh, x cubed plus x to the four. That's how you differentiate here. Uh, this is a uh, this is a uh, Konsevich tells you how to do this uh, in a kind of slightly more formal way, but this is what it amounts to. Um, and with respect to y is rather fun because I'm going to ignore anyone that's got an x on the left, so that means ignore those guys. And then the remainder, I'm just going to strike a y off the left. And what you see that left is um, x y plus y x. In other words, the this Jacobian algebra it is um, anti-commuting variables x and y. Um, you can calculate that the dimension of uh, the Jacobian is finite in this case. Um, we got a lot out of reading uh, Udo and uh, Smoktunovich's paper in 1980, uh, 2018, where they're kind of experts in doing this kind of calculation and we're not, but we you get the hang of it in the well. And in fact, what you find is that this dimension is it's finite because it's equal to, well, there's kind of nine um, annihilated by the maximal ideal and then one sitting somewhere else, which uh, is certainly finite. Um, just to finish that picture, you can go on and um, use that glue. Glue X is C3 union C3 using this glue up here that Balash um, pointed out, uh, you can calculate 
the global functions on that. Um, I'll tell you what they are. There's f, it turns out to be one. Um, yeah, because look, f is a, is a function in the f patch, and it's also a polynomial in the y, in the ABC patch, so that's fine. And uh, uh, I won't drag this out very far, but um, there's another one, and there's another one, and there's another one, and they get a little bit big, but you know, so what? And you can use those four to map to C for, and there's a hypersurface image, which um, is given by, uh, I'm not going to calculate it all, it's a little bit big, but it's U cubed plus VW squared plus higher order terms. And what you notice there is that if I took a singular, what you notice in this equation, if you trust me that it's right, is that if I wrote V equals W, wrote V equals W in, inside that, V equals W. Inside that, there's a surface which at the origin has a D4 uh, singularity. And so we think of this, we call this a, we and everybody else calls this a D4 flop because it's general hyperplane section and Y is D4. And that's one of the ways of classifying flops or beginning to classify flops. Cool, that, that's just an example. Let me, uh, let me leave it sitting up there. Let me move on to another of these kind of ingredients, which is this contraction algebra. Um, so um, Donovan and Weems, so Michael Weems is of course the person I'm working with here a little while ago, uh, associate an algebra, associate a, a non-commutative algebra um, to a flop. In fact, it, what they do is much more general than that. But if the flop is here, x goes down to y by f, uh, and the, the hypotheses they want actually are not all the not all the smoothness and the floppingness, but just that um, there's a rationality one. Um, that push derived push down is trivial and that the dimension this is the really big punch you want actually the dimension of the fibers is less than or equal to one that's really great for this for flops because they're just contracting a single curve in our case um uh of course you know if you by rationalists are going to think well there's a million other things i'd like to do and this unfortunately doesn't apply to them but um never mind make your own algebra um so a flop like that has an invariant called AF, that's called that's the thing called the contraction algebra, and it's a non-commutative, not necessarily commutative algebra. Um, uh, and it's something we you can calculate. Um, and I want to show you a little bit of that. Um, in fact, I say not necessarily commutative. So for um, uh, A is, so, so just some facts about A, A, F is finite dimensional um, for, for a threefold flop. And it's strictly non commutative in exactly the case we're looking at the one minus three flops and not commutative for um, one minus three. So we're definitely looking at just little uh, finite dimension algebras um, that are not commutative, and that's that's what we're studying. So in our situation, um, all of these algebras are in fact Jacobi algebras. Um, a, F is always, I see I'm using F for two things. I'm, I hope that isn't upsetting. Uh, is, AF is always a Jacobi algebra. Um, so this is a uh, much more general statement by Vandenberg uh, in 15. Um, it's some kind of Calabi R3 algebra. And he's, he explains that um, it's controlled by a non commutative potential. Uh, and it is at least possible and indeed is conjectured by Donovan and Williams, um, that these algebras AF, that they classify, they classify flops. That's to say um, F1 and F2, um, so two, two flopping contractions 
are isomorphic uh, if and only if um, their corresponding contraction algebras AF1 and F2 are isomorphic uh, algebras. Um, that's at least possible. It's it's much closer than possible. Um, uh, Hua in 18 um, proves this under the condition that is that the A's have more structure. So prove this with um, A infinity structures on the A's. A infinity structures. So whether or not those are necessary, that extra data is necessary, um, that's not known. But uh, anyway, that, that's good enough for us at the moment. Let me give you a picture of what we're trying to do. I mean, I could say, you know, the fantasy is we, we would love to classify three fell flops, right? But uh, that's not so so far so successful. But um, but we have. So. We have at least um, a rather crude picture. Which looks like this. On the one hand, there's uh, there's geometry. Uh, which in our case means something like a flopping contraction. Uh, and on the other, what the contraction algebra gives is a map over to um, some rather complicated algebra, um, namely the the uh, contraction algebra AF. And in our case, um, this is flopping and this is finite dimensional. And, you know, if you like the the uh, the conjecture down here is saying that with the right hypotheses, perhaps being local and so on, uh, this map would be uh, invertible. Um, but we don't know that, so we ex we can nevertheless exploit this picture um, in a much more naive way. In a naive way, uh, but without assuming the conjectures. Uh, the Donovan Weems conjecture. Cool. So, um, what I'd like to do is show you the kind of calculation, you know, show you the, the thing we're aiming at, the kind of calculation that we're getting ourselves involved with and, you know, are spending our lives doing at the moment when not teaching, and then the kind of shape of the results that we seem to be getting. Um, and I'm afraid we don't have these results in the bag yet. So, I, you know, anyway. So this is a, a section called ongoing. Um, so these are, you know, what we're trying to do. These are attempts to classify. Well, we want to classify flops, but we don't. We classify Jacobian algebras. Um, rather than flops or anything else. Um, uh, and only then, only then worry about, um, well, up in this picture, we were thinking about them being finite dimensional. So I'll, I'll try to resist that temptation because it's just bloody irritating, isn't it? Um, uh, then only then try to worry about finite dimensionalness of them um, and or or not. I mean, there's absolutely no reason why they should be. They they, they struggle to be finite dimensional. Those non commutative rings are real pigs. They're absolutely vast. And so to pin them down with just a couple of relations to get them finite is is um, um, miserable work. Uh, and only then. Once we understand a little bit about their dimension. Worry about the geometry. In other words, try and invert that map. Um, let me just make a little aside just to say this this business about differentiation a little bit more clearly, clearly, um, uh, because to understand the trivialities, of the, cal the calculations themselves are pretty straightforward and pretty simple, but there's just a lot of them to understand the trivialities. We, um, I should say I'm stealing this or, you know, interpreting all this from uh, Konsevich's paper on um, I think has various names, but cyclic derivative, for instance, is one of the names. And even even in even there, there's a, 
a couple of different ways of saying it. Um, so sim of a product of variables, z1 up to s, means add up all the rotations of that monomial. So oops, add up from i is 1 up to s of z i up to z s, z1 up to z i minus 1. So symmetry, that's the kind of operator. And then uh, dx, this is the derivative I was talking about earlier, where you just strike off um, for any leftmost x's. It's either n if m was of the form xn, and otherwise it's zero. And then the derivative I'm actually talking about, curly dx uh, of, um, or curly dx, let me write it like this, is first you symmetrize and then you strike off. Um, and uh, similarly, uh, curly dy. And the thing that you'll notice at once is um, that um, curly dx of a commutator is zero. Um, uh, Buh, 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 buh. Yeah, because um, I'm just symmetrizing the same kind of thing, and uh, then I've put minus sign in to cancel everyone out. And so, uh, let me give you a sample sample um, kind of result. Let me call it a result, but it's uh, it's a little bit too much to say because I'm just going to recover things you already know. So let f be a potential in A, and here I'm I'm going to work um, formally at the or formally in uh, power series, uh, and you'll see why. And so F um, F is I'll just write it out in its graded pieces F two F three and so on. Uh, and I'm going to suppose that F two is not zero. And so uh, well, you know, that's just a case assumption then. F is isomorphic to, I'll say what isomorphic means, but it's either x squared or it's x squared plus y to the n for some n at least two. And yeah, what, what does isomorphism here mean? Where well, F isomorphic to G uh, means, uh, it's just a kind of shorthand for the Jacobian algebras are isomorphic to one another. There's a bunch of equivalence relations and you can follow them, it's not a big deal. Um, so uh, let me give the proof of this. This is just in algebra. You know, you may be having geometrical thoughts. Well, stop it, that's naughty. We're just talking about algebra here. We'll come to geometry in a minute. So suppose um, F is X squared plus um, H of X, Y. Uh, and h is uh, as uh, order at least three. So in, in, there's just three steps if we suspend disbelief for a moment. Um, inductively, um, if one of the terms, well, if in degree d, h has one of the terms of sim, and now this is just a little bit of a mess, but um, I'm writing x to the a1, y to the b1, all the way up to uh, y to the b s, uh, where all the where let's say a1 is at least one. So in other words, if there's an x somewhere, and then you in degree d uh, rotate it around to be the front, and then just worry about uh, where the other x's and y's might be. If you've got someone in them, then up to isomorphism, you can replace HD by, well, by adding in a whole bunch of commutators. I could replace it by an anti-commutator. So this is just a usual skew plus non-skew thing. Um, X times X A1 minus 1, y, one, y to the B1 and so on. Whoops, oh dear. Y B1 and so on up to Y to the BS minus um, a plus, it's an anti-commutator, plus um, 
x to the a1 uh, minus 1, da, 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 y to the s x. Well, you can commutate it all into a single monomial, the one with the x at the front, indeed, the one I've done here, and then you can pull half of it out by an anti commutator. There's, there's going to be a coefficient in front of this. And then um, there's a little map here, which you can see x, um, x y goes to x plus, um, and then that funny thing in brackets there, the x to the a1 minus 1, da, 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 y to the bs, comma y, that's an automorphism of a, is an automorphism of a, um, with um, phi of f is now x squared um, plus, well, I have never addressed any things purely in y. I need an x, so there could be a whole bunch of y stuff still. And then plus a new h, where h1 is now in a d plus 1. In other words, this is a kind of, it's, I've, I've kind of completed the square, right? And just pushed, pushed all of this x stuff in a. In, in H into one higher in one higher degree. Just to not have to talk about power series too significantly, let me just suppose for a moment that um, the dimension of JF is finite. In that case, um, the ideal of DXF and DYF, well, you just have to be a tiny bit careful. Let me, the closure of the ideal. These things are the infinite. There's topology in my view, but um, is is the same thing uh, plus the maximal ideal uh, to some nice big power. The kind of null stones uh, So for d bigger than capital N, um, without lots of generality, f was equal to x squared plus um, y to some power into y to the into well, uh, there may be coefficients sitting there, but uh, there's a polynomial in y, so it's x squared plus a polynomial in y, and I've just pulled out the leading term. And so, you know, well, you can see what I'm going to do, what's going to, how to tidy this up. This thing here, u in a, is a unit, and so I can now complete. Hello? Oh, question? No, okay. Um, uh, so, change of coordinates, change of coordinates and x, y goes to. So, I mean, Michael and I uh, are, you know, struggle working in these things. This is completely elementary. You could teach this to undergraduates if you wish. Um, uh, and yet it's just, a, it's just a little bit of a pig to do these calculations. So, you know, we having to write these things down and, you know, if they're commutative, they're all very straightforward and you believe them, but non-commutatively, it's just a little bit more fiddly. Anyway, and there's there's the proof, right? I make the change of coordinates. I've killed all the, killed that unit, and I I found myself in the finite case in this second option. And in the infinite case, I'd have just had to work out how to push stuff away. Fine, that's the proof. Um, so in other words, just to look at the project, look at look at the the idea here is first you worry about Jacobian al algebras just in their own terms. Um, then you're going to worry about the dimensionless. Well, we we that's easy to see. This one's infinite dimensional and this one's finite dimensional. And then we're going to worry about the geometry. So um, let me let me do those next two steps. Ooh, let's see. So to the geometry. Um, so um, we're in the situation where f2 is not zero, then there are two things to say. First of all, I mean, all the work's been done, but um, all of these Jacobi algebras are realized by geometry. Because now I've got a finite list of, as it were, normal forms. Um, I can just uh, study them all, do the gluing if I have to, and understand what they are. So case A, F is X squared, then the dimension is infinite. And what I uh, what I can, what I realise if I do that glue is um, a divisorial contraction, crepent. That's the world we're in, um, of a threefold um, down to a line. 
and uh, you know if you're looking at this and it, you've ever seen things like this before that's a line that you won't be surprised that's a line of a1 singularities you know transverse a1 singularities um cool no that's not a great surprise there you've probably seen that before so if x is if f is x squared plus y squared then uh, dimension of j f is one and you calculate away and that you see that's the tier flop and see if well you're not surprised now right if it's y to the n then dimension of j f is um n minus one n plus one n n minus one um and that gives uh, the read pagoda so perhaps i didn't say um the, the word pagoda but miles flops are called pagodas and that's um with the with the number n which is miles's width invariant and the same as the first copper king of Afrin. so that's the first thing and the second thing is moreover you can check they're all different um in other words um can check that a f is they're all different they're all equal to their jacobi algebra the, the contraction algebra equals the jacobi algebra and they're all different um uh, and they confirm the donovan weem conjecture in this case i mean that's a that's a little bit moot isn't it because what i'm saying is <laughs> i found some subset on the left and some subset on the right they're in bijection well you know so what but um that's that's the that's the plan and of course i what i just i just ran the whole plan for f2 non-zero and uh all the action happens when f2 is zero so um let me tell you what we've been going doing let me show you the shape of our results and let me show you what we gain by um ignoring the geometry for a little while now we've uh, you know you may, if you've seen us talk you'll know that we've had to do it well we haven't had to but we did do rather large computer searches to find lots and lots and lots of examples um namely try a potential f uh, we've got a few million of those and then uh, then uh, you know we want jf to be finite dimensional if we want to flop and then we uh, calculate the flop and the gopakum of Afra and so on and so on and so we we get this kind of zoo of examples which uh, sort of motivates us uh, that gives a picture uh, of well what what we would like to be length two or d4 flops now i should say um lots and lots of people are working on these things all the time so uh uh you do in smart and uh Kalmata, um, both both of the papers around uh, in this uh, last year, uh, with lockdown papers, um, they're they're finding many of these normal forms, um, and they're showing that these things really are constructed. This is not computer algebra. The computer algebra is giving us the shape of the answer, which is very convenient for us. Um, but in the end, everything is built by you know maths. Um, so we're going to work with someone with a zero quadratic term uh, and this particular uh, cubic term plus and then here comes the picture of the classification well you're allowed other things in in cubic so you can have x cubed plus x to the four um x cubed plus x to the six uh x cubed plus x to the eight and so on now what i'm writing down is a list of representatives up to isomorphism, up to isomorphism of Jacobi algebras. And so if it's if I haven't written it down, it's because it's already on the list. And just for a change, I'm not writing coefficients in because the coefficients are all one. Uh, so that's fine. So as x to the four, uh, there's a sort of a, a slightly sporadic one, x to the four plus x to the five. And then here is x to the five plus x to the six. And now I'm doing this odd one where you can see why I'm lining them up. It's x to the 5 plus x to the 10. You can see there's uh, little kind of lines down here. Um, I want to draw a little bit of this picture just because 
sorry, in a, in a perfect world, maybe I'd prepared it in advance, but um, uh, I, I want to show you the kind of sh the shapes of classification that we begin to see in this. So x to the 6 plus x to the 9. Um, oh, I missed an x to the 5 out here, the next to the 5 sitting here. Uh, I promise to finish at least by the end of the page. Um, x to the 7 plus x to the 10. Uh, <laughs> well, I thought I was promising that. Um, here's an x to the 8, and then there's some sporadic x to 8 plus x to the 9, and there's some more here, and uh, x to the 9 plus x to the 10. Uh, I've missed out a couple, haven't I? There's an x to the 7 sitting here, there's an x to the 9. Now this, and this, this is cool. Okay, that's what everybody is. And uh, um, let me, those are potentials. And that's the beginning of a big map of potentials uh, with of Jacobi algebras up to isomorphism. That's got nothing to do with geometry. That's just a statement in algebra with a whole bunch of coordinate changes trying to prove it. Um, we don't have that completely in the bag, but you know, that's the kind of shape, that's the shape of things that we calculate. We could calculate the copicum vaffer invariants because they can be recovered from the Jacobi algebra in the cases that it's a contraction algebra. So let me just draw those in. So there's 4, 1, there's 4, 2, 4, 3, and so on. Um, this guy is 5, 1. In fact, they both are. So let me, uh, let me um, just ring those together. They're both 5, 1. But different. Um, uh, so 6, 2, uh, 6, 3, and so on, 6, 4. Uh, this guy is 7, oops, 7, 2, sorry. Um, 8, 1, 8, 2, uh, sorry, 8, 3 and 8, 4, of course. That's what the whole point of these vertical lines is, right? That's the, that's the, uh, N2, the second couple king of Afro. And here's 9, 3, and here's uh, 9, 4. Uh, oh, that's obviously about false, so 10, 4. And so on. And so you can see these sort of lines of these infinite families. Um, you know, the reason I'm writing Gopal king of Afro is, is because we can actually build these flops um, and they fit in these infinite families, which um, obviously go across like that. But they, have nice kind of um, uh, they sort of extend in just a slightly curious way, which I wouldn't say. Whoops, that was wrong. What am I look? What am I trying to explain here? X to the five plus even. So uh, it would be nice to attach that one in the beginning of this sequence. And here's uh, these three all together with the same. These are all together with the same. And then we've got a sequence here which goes x to the 7 plus even chops off there, and x to the um, 9 plus even comes into here, and then into here, and so on. So there's these, these infinite families that you can sort of um, line up. And of course, by lining them up, I'm not just, that's not just me looking at the numbers. Those, th those represent degenerations of one family into the next. Um, well, I haven't quite managed to finish this, because um, uh, these guys here, um, well, these ones are the infinite dimensional ones. Um, so we classified that, classified everything, and so, so of course some, some things come out infinite dimensional. They're not that bad, they're like a polynomial ring, but these obviously fit in their own sequence, which, uh, and they also can be realized in geometry. So these have, dimension of Jacobian is infinite, and these are corresponding to divisorial, crepent divisorial contractions, which look like this. Um, so, well, let me draw a divisor contracting to a line, of course, because the fibers had better be one dimensional. And sitting down here is the image of that, and that's uh, transverse A1 as B4, but of course, um, um, I've built into it that there's D4 at the origin. So uh, let's try and say that. So um, there's a CD4 singularity, and the rest of the line is transverse A1 singularities. 
And if you believe that the contraction algebra controls this setup, I mean, any contraction of that nature has a contraction algebra at the at the fiber above the D4. And if you really believe that that conjecture, that that's controlling the whole then that's all contractions of that nature, divisorial to a curve from a smooth threefold with uh, um, a singular cur canonical curve in the image with that D4 singularity in the origin. Now, I don't know any other examples, but when I say that it like that, that sounds jolly suspicious because there should be a lot of them, but there is at least an infinite family of them here. So that's uh, kind of the point. Um, uh, if you know about the subject, you know that we've just scratched the surface here, right? There's a, there are um, six different types of ADE uh, phenomenon that can happen uh, at the origin here. There's uh, uh, not just D4, but uh, six types. The A1s were, were already handled uh, by the classified normal bundles. And so there are five types. So we've done one, well, we haven't done, but we're addressing one of these five types, and there are many others. Uh, those will happen when this um, cubic term becomes one of the other natural cubic normal forms. But uh, we don't have anything concrete to say about that other than um, a few illustrative examples and families. So I'll stop there. Thank you very much.